In this video, I'll be giving you a basic overview of virtual machines. Before we can actually discuss virtual machines in any reasonable manner, we first need to understand some important terms and concepts surrounding them. This understanding should start with the concept of virtualization. First, let's focus on one of the main problems that virtualization helps solve. Let's say I have two separate computers for which I develop on, my computer at home and my computer at work. On my home computer, I have the Windows operating system installed, and at work, I have a Mac operating system installed. After a couple of days, I start developing a killer application, if I do say so myself, say a video game, and I got everything to work perfectly on my computer. The next day, I decide to take it into work to continue to add new features to it. I'm sure some of you know where I'm going with this. Once I get to work, I start up my game application on my work computer with the Mac OS installed, and the game crashes. I am now the laughingstock of the office because no one believes that I actually got this game to work. So what happened? Well, unfortunately, in the world of programming, whether it be games or other software applications or websites, different development environments can cause unexpected issues with software. In my previous example, my game worked perfectly fine within the Windows operating system environment, but when I tried to run the same game on a Mac, it just wouldn't work. Wouldn't it have been great if I could have just moved my entire Windows operating system environment with my game installed on it and loaded it on the Mac computer? Well, let's take the Mac operating system out of the picture for a second and just look at the problem of trying to take one OS from one machine and install it on another machine. You can't really just copy and paste it and put it on the new machine. This is because an OS is tied down to a machine by hardware drivers which are just pieces of software that allow the OS to talk to and use the hardware. You can try and use some sort of data migration or other cloning software to do the trick, but this comes with its own set of possible issues, most notably driver compatibility issues. Also, if we bring the Mac operating system back into play and say it's installed on my work computer again, you can't just install my Windows operating system on top of another operating system such as Mac. I mean, that's just silly, right? Or is it? Dun dun dun! You could think of virtualization as the idea of creating a virtualized computer within your computer. Now this virtual computer is really just a software program known as a hypervisor that you can download and install onto your computer. This hypervisor can sit on top of the installed OS and the physical hardware and then talk to them through some virtualized drivers. Without getting too technical here, all this means is that we can now download and install an operating system onto the hypervisor instead of having to install it directly on a machine. Now, as long as I have that same hypervisor program installed on a particular computer, I can run my operating system. This technique solves my problem presented earlier as I can now first download a hypervisor program onto my computer at home and install the same Windows operating system onto that hypervisor. I can develop my game as normal within this Windows virtual environment. If I ever needed to transfer my game to another machine, such as my work machine with the Mac OS tied down to it, all I need to do is install that same hypervisor program onto it. Then I can run my Windows virtual environment on that hypervisor and run my game. I now know my game will work as I have the same environment I had at home. This means that hypervisors provide portability for our operating system environments. They also give us the ability to install multiple different OS environments onto one computer since we're not tied down to the physical hardware anymore. Each individual operating system environment you download and set up on a hypervisor is known as a virtual machine. Just to give you quick real world context, on my Windows desktop you can see I have VirtualBox downloaded and installed. VirtualBox is one of the hypervisor programs that you can download. If we double click it, we can see on the left here are my virtual machines. As you can see, I have a couple of them here, and currently I only have some Windows machines installed, but I could have also just as easily had some Mac or Linux virtual machines here as well if I wanted to. Currently, they're all powered off, but if I wanted to start one, all I have to do is press the Start button here or double click it. As you can see, a new window pops up here and everything is just going to boot up as normal just as it would on a regular computer. If I wanted to, I could also start up all of my other machines at the same time, given I had the proper horsepower.
The kinds of hypervisors we've been discussing so far, including VirtualBox, are known as Type 2 or hosted hypervisors. Type 2 or hosted hypervisors need to be installed on top of an existing operating system. I mention this because there is also such thing as Type 1 or bare metal hypervisors, which are actually installed onto the physical hardware of a computer and any operating system is then installed on top of that hypervisor. I won't get into too much detail on these for now, just know that they exist. Before we end here, one other major benefit of virtual machines and hypervisors other than portability is that they provide separate closed off environments from your main operating system. It's good to use virtual machines for development or testing purposes because if something were to go wrong, you could just get rid of that virtual machine and then create a new one quickly and easily. A good practice is to install software you're unsure of or know little about first on a virtual machine and make sure it works correctly. Once you've verified everything's good and there's no viruses, then you can just go back to your host machine and download that program with a peace of mind. 